Hey guys, so today's video is a little bit different than what we normally do. This week we have been a little bit light with the videos. I only have three of the regularly scheduled videos for you guys this week. The Monday video, which is Monday Mystery, which we did over Connie Converse. And then we did the Book of Jubilee reading. And then tomorrow on Friday I have part two of The Devil's Family coming out for you guys. Normally on Tuesdays and Thursdays and sometimes Saturdays, we'll have interviews up for you guys. But this is a holiday week here in the United States. And so it's been a little bit slower this week because a lot of people are taking time off to be with their families and to celebrate this holiday. I also know that over in Europe, you have the soccer or football um, competition going on. And so I know it's a little bit different of a week than what it normally is. So I wanted to give you guys just an extra bonus video. This is not a normal video of what we normally do. This is not a deep dive. This is just letting you guys kind of have a glimpse into an event, an attraction that might be in your neck of the woods as well. When I first started doing this channel, I did a lot of ghost stories and I also had a playlist called Things to Do in Atlanta. I will um, include that playlist down in the description box below. I've also got old videos of things to do in Georgia. So this is kind of like some of the older videos I was doing over a year ago with uh, promoting the city of Atlanta with attractions. Now my niece, my, my oldest niece, Jacqueline, turned seven on the 25th of June. Now, I know for most kids who have summer birthdays, it's kind of fun because you have a chance to really celebrate with all your little school friends. But as we know, these last, or this last about year and a half has been very complicated for our world and even more so complicated for children because they don't understand what's actually going on. And for my niece, she just had a new baby little sister. They've moved houses. A lot of things have gone on this year for her. And so for her birthday this year, on her actual birthday, on the 25th, my mother, my sister, Jacqueline, my niece, and her little sister, her, new, her newborn little sister, May, all went for a interactive girls' day at Candytopia. Now, I had never heard of Candytopia until my sister sent me the information. It was fun. It was definitely for kids. And as you guys know, Georgia is pretty much open. There's not a whole lot of regulations. Atlanta is a little bit of a different story. We do have some uptight people here in Atlanta, but most of Georgia is pretty open. And Candytopia was also open as well. So if you have kids in the area and you want to get them out of the house, this was kind of an interesting thing fun thing to do to take your kids. It's all these installations and artwork made out of candy. And yes, they can touch it. They just can't lick it or pick it, as they say. Now, none of us wore a mask. A lot of people there did have masks on, but we obviously did not wear masks, and it was totally fine. The staff at Candytopia was super, super nice, super, super sweet. I can't speak any highly of how they were, they were amazing. And even my little newborn niece did really, really well, even though it was a very loud and colorful experience. And my niece, Jacqueline, the birthday girl, had a lot of fun. So if you're looking for something for your kids to do, this was definitely quite, quite enjoyable. Now again, this is not a deep dive. As I will tell you guys later in the episode, I'm not planning on doing a deep dive into Candytopia. It doesn't seem to be like it's something that we really need to do a deep dive into. It's not that big or huge. It's just it's just a, a like an amusement themed event for children, basically. So Next, we're gonna go over a couple of websites that give you a brief history into the founders of Candytopia and what Candytopia is. And then at the end, we're gonna look at some of my footage from my niece's birthday at Candytopia. Again, this is not the typical video we normally do, and tomorrow morning you will get another typical video for Esoteric Atlanta. But for today, I hope that you enjoy. All right, so let's look at a couple of articles regarding Candytopia. This one is from the Atlanta Jewish Times, and it's titled Candytopia, the product of a Jewish imagination. It's sweet, it's interactive, it's playful, it's sensory overload, it's Candytopia, the latest experimental shopping exhibition to hit Atlanta. I wouldn't call it um, shopping exhibition 
there is a gift store at the end where you can buy like overpriced candy. But in my opinion, going to Candy Topia with my niece, it's very much just like a playground for kids. You know, it's really cool too. I mean, they did a, a pretty good job in my opinion. It's sweet, it's interactive, it's playful, it's sensory overload, it's Candytopia. Again, the latest experimental shopping exhibition to hit Atlanta, Atlanta, excuse me. Candytopia brings the quintessential childhood fantasy of candy coated world to life. It's located at the Lenox Marketplace in Buckhead, which opened last month. So for, if you're a local in Atlanta, you might not actually know what that shopping center is because we call that shopping center here for locals Disco Kroger. So it's located right beside the Disco Kroger. If you are a native Atlantean, you'll know which Kroger I'm talking about. We have two specific Kroger's in Atlanta. One is Disco Kroger, which is in Buckhead. Buckhead, for those who are not from Atlanta, is like our Beverly Hills of Atlanta. It's really close to like the governor's mansion. And then we have what we call, um, I can't say the word on YouTube, M-U-R-D-E-R -E Kroger which is closer to the Beltline, right beside Ponce City Market. And those two locations, most people from this, this um, of city know exactly where, where that is. So um, Canytopia, it's located in the old World Market that used to be right beside the Kroger there. World Market has, not, has now moved to another location. So that's the center that they're using for Candytopia. It's the old world market right beside Kroger in the Disco Kroger parking lot in Buckhead. Candytopia is appealing for both kids and adults who appreciate the sweeter side of life, said Jackie Sorkin, a global candy artist. She created the exhibition with co-founders Zach Hartog, an events production designer expert, and John Goodman, a retail veteran. I watched Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory and was raised on the movie and the principles in the movie of dream big and be a good person, Sorkin said. You can be a little crazy and your dreams can come true. I watched it so much. I made it come true for myself. And sorry if you hear my dog walking around. So that's Jackie. That's the woman who is the artist who created um, Candytopia. And it does. It, it does remind you a lot, especially in the beginning of what Willy Wonka was like. And I believe, I know, from what I understand, this is a touring exhibition. Um, if they were to actually just be centered in cities and not tour, I think they could make it even better and make it even, even more like uh, Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Candytopia Atlanta features all the popular attractions from its locations in New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Miami with new addition for Atlanta visitors. There are candied portraits of Real Housewives of Atlanta's Nene Leakes and Zim, excuse me, Zim Zolziak, a candy portrait tribute to Ray Charles and a giant candy coated Georgia peach. There were cities we wanted to go to. Atlanta was on the top of our list, Goodman said. The exhibition includes more than a dozen of rooms of candy made installations, including a marshmallow swing pool with half a million foam marshmallows and craft jet putch puffed marshmallow samples, an underwater themed room with candy covered sea creatures, creatures, excuse me, a rainbow room with flying unicorn pigs, conf confetti explosions, and a trolley twisted sour bright colors gummy samplers. And yes, they did have the marshmallow pit. My niece did play in it. Um, you have to have socks. So it might seem weird for our friends watching from colder climates, but here in Atlanta in the summertime, most of us wear flip flops because it's so damn hot outside. Your feet start sweating. So if you are from Atlanta and you want to go to Candytopia, if you want to play in the marshmallow pit, you do have to bring socks to play in the marshmallow pit. Celebrities such as Drew Barrymore, Gwyneth Paltrow, Jessica Biel, Bruce Willis, Adam Sandler, Kevin Durant, Josh Jamel, Christina Aguilera, James Corden, Wiz Khalifi, Hilary Duff, Alessandra Ambrosia have all visited the mini theme park. It's the most magical place at Goodman, former CEO of Charlotte Ruse and Wet Seal. He got involved with the project after seeing the candy portions done by Sorkin and her team. After running the numbers, he felt like it was his destiny. It's just the most magical place. We just bring happiness to people for an hour or so and you can't stop smiling. He said it's all ages. And by the time people get to the third room, they can't stop smiling. 
Each location is blessed by Rabbi Zalman Sanir. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Executive director of um, Minichim Educational Foundation. Again, don't know if I'm saying that right. It offers kosher candy, an important part of the experience. Goodman said in the New York City, Candytopia includes a kosher table with chocolates and taffy. He plans to welcome the, the Hasidic community in Atlanta after receiving such great feedback in New York City. Every holiday like Puran and and Hasidic communities was there. The community really embraced us and had fun. Goodman said the rabbi showed me pictures of himself and his family, and it was really special. We do have a Jewish community here in Atlanta, but it's not as big as communities like in New York. Um, but we do have one here in Atlanta for sure. Sorkin is the daughter of immigrants. Her father is an Argentinian Russian Jew, and her mother is Mexican, both hardworking immigrants with uh, often led to Sorkin being home alone. I was a typical latchkey kid, she said. She comforted herself with food early on. And by the time she was 12, she was enrolled at Camp Pinbrook in Pennsylvania, a weight loss camp for teens. When she attended the camp, Sorkin finally felt that she, she belonged, she said. There, there she began to cultivate a healthier relationship with food and with herself. Now she's dedicated to bringing sweetness to as many people as possible. Candy was taken away from me as a kid, and I loved it so much. Now that I have turned candy into a life for me, she said, the feeling, the same feeling of belonging I had at Camp Pinbrook is what makes Candytopia this incredible place where everybody belongs. I love, I love that through candy, which is my medium, we've created this incredible place. We have a lightning in a bottle, and this is magic we've captured. Okay, so there's that article on it. And I haven't done any deep dives into Candytopia as far as if it's, if it's like deep state run or anything like that. I don't really plan on looking that deeply into can Candytopia for those kind of things because um, it's not everywhere and it's, it's not a huge exhibition. So, um, so before anybody asks, I just haven't even, I'm sure there's some ties to some nefarious people, but um, yeah, I'm just, unless something happens with Candytopia where it becomes a huge issue, I'll look into it. But as far as that, this is just something for fun that's here in Atlanta that people can do. All right. So this is from our favorite news agency. Obviously, that's a sarcastic joke. CNN. CNN's headquarters is located here in Atlanta. So they've titled this article, Candytopia is a Weird and Wonderful Candy Wonderland. All right. Atlanta. Want to hang out with Cardi B? Not really. What about the land, uh, legendary Marilyn Monroe or famous Mona Lisa, the painting that is? Imagine being in the same room as all three. And imagine if that room was adjacent to a giant aquarium and a larger than life garden with exotic wildlife. With Narnia-like doors of wonder that lead into rainbow tunnels headed to the clouds where unicorn, unicorn pig farts confetti. I have a video of that unicorn pig farting confetti that will play after this at the end of this episode. The distant roar of the cannon fire sounds in the background. Expect in the wacky world, the cannonballs are marshmallows and everything and everyone is made of candy. Welcome to Candytopia. Jackie Sorkin, co-founder and co-creator of Candytopia, calls the sweet creation an incredible candy wonderland where everything runs on candy. You'll see we have my niece took a picture in front of the Sphinx here. And so this had hundreds of hours, approximately 317 hours and 7,800 pieces of candy. Later, the Sphinx looms large at Candytopia. Candytopia, an immersive experience, thinks of itself as a mini theme park, a place where you can come to escape the world, Sorkin says. It's really just the magical place that runs on sugar and candy, and you lose your mind here. It's a place to have fun. The inspiration for Candytopia comes from, surprise, surprise, Willy Wonka and the different room house of a variety of experiences. No Oompa Loompas, guys. No Oompa Loompas. All right, where do we go? Okay, there's a Garden of Eden-esque interactive space containing giant flowers, sporting unique candy-themed smells, a tiger, and a kimono drago, dragon, excuse me, made entirely of jelly beans and a canopy of sounds coming from the four sound installations. The mini theme park pays homage to Game of Thrones, Marilyn Monroe, Cardi B, Mona Lisa, and of course, Willy Wonka. Other famous celebrities are featured as well. The twist, however, is that they're all made from hundreds of grams of candy and sugar, including the interactive, 
an ornate centerpiece, a sphinx. So here's the aquarium. You all see all this with the videos I took with my niece. Hundreds of thousands of pieces of candy were used to create the 3D models, explained Sorkin. Excuse me, licorice, jelly beans, gummy bears, uh, gumdrops. These are all manipulated to create the pop-up art. We look at candy in a completely different way. It's art for us, says, says Sorkin. The sweet experience includes illusions of tunnels, green screens that serve as a backdrop for photos, and a candy aquarium with sharks, fish, and a life-size diver. Every room is an Instagrammable, sugary, sweet experience and a candy-coated photo opportunity for kids and adults of all ages. You know, I started creating my candy art, pregnant and broke, out of my garage, said Sorkin. I mean, it can't be more cliche than that. The principles of the Willy Wonka movie, you know, the dream big mentality, never give up, have crazy ideas, let people think you're nuts and keep going anyway. That really struck a chord with me when I was a kid. The chord was led to a full-fledged symphony of bright, vibrant rainbow colors and candy on display at Candytopia. During the four-month run, the pop-up currently in Atlanta has vowed, wowed visitors from in San Francisco, New York, and Minnesota's Mall of America. Check the website for location information. I will include a website link in the description box below so you can see if it's coming to a city near you. If you go, have your smartphone ready and your sweet to tooth primed. Oh, and make sure to watch out for the not so discreet confetti attacks around the unicorn farm pigs and try not to get caught in the crossfires of the marshmallow cannonballs. It sounds bizarre, that's okay. It's sort of the whole idea. It's just so weird, said Sorkin, and it makes everyone smile. All right, so without further ado, we will now go to the video that I took with my seven-year-old niece Jacqueline for her birthday. Connoisseurs of all ages, welcome to Candy Topia. Now, before you begin your tour, let's go over a few important rules to make sure your journey is truly delectable. Feel free to touch. And I will be teaching you the rules of Candy Sophia today. Look at Sharpie, 